Okay, thanks a lot for, 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 for coming. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Christian, Christian Lederman. I work for UMSA, uh, an enterprise technology management company. And I will t t uh, today I will talk you, uh, will tell you a tale of two kitchens, or uh, how to go about hypermodernizing your code base. So, what, what I, uh, I'm go going to talk about is what is hypermodern Python, why we would uh, like <coughs> our code base to be hypermodern, and how to get there from our legacy code to a nice hypermodern hyper, hyper uh, code base. Yeah, well, what is uh, hypermodern Python? Hypermodern Python actually is a, um, idea stems from an article series of, with the same title by Claudio uh, Jolovich. And it's an opinion uh, native uh, guideline about best practices and clean code in Python in the 21st century. So that is uh, the uh, hypermodern Python uh, cookie cutter. So that's from, from the readme of the repo. I won't go through it. So let's run into this. A, tool, a tale of two kitchens. So just let this thing get up. So which kitchen do you think is better in terms of security, health and safety? Where would you deliver faster? Deliver higher quality out of? And if you had to work in those kitchens, where would you get your be uh, uh, better job, job satisfaction and personal growth? So uh, if you think it's kitchen one, please uh, raise one hand. And if it's kitchen two, please raise two hands. Uh, I just wanted to see your whole auditorium uh, doing the all that. <laughs> so, and it's not that the uh, uh, <clears throat> that our kitchen is sometimes messy. Sometimes actually there is a fire in it. I uh, yeah, tried to get a picture of the kitchen fire in, <clears throat> uh, but I w wasn't successful. So you have to Photoshop that in, in your mind. Nobody seems to turn around <clears throat> to take a selfie when, when the kitchen is on fire. Uh, um, uh, Okay, uh, um, let's talk about why we actually want to clean up our code base and make it uh, hypermodern. So first of all, minimize our context switches. If our code looks the same everywhere, we have this, uh, <coughs> less mental overhead to switch in between different code styles. And that, uh, yeah, it's a lean principle. We want to eliminate, elim <coughs> Eliminate waste, sorry. Uh, so uh, our, our friction is low. Um, uh, <coughs> sorry, a bit about, I'm a bit nervous. Uh, um, when you think about, about broken windows, so when you have a, an abandoned house, as soon as the first window is broken, the next windows will follow suit and it deteriorates from that in an amazing speed, actually. Or when you think about your Boy Scout rule, always leave the place better than you found it. It's so much easier to leave the place better than you found it if you found it in a relatively good condition in the first place. So all these are to improve the quality of our code. Uh, yeah, how do we start? We start small, we start simple, and start now. So, and yeah, where to start? Uh, yeah, pre-commit is nowadays pretty much our weapon of choice to uh, execute code when you, um, uh, when you do, do mo mo modifications. I don't know, I don't mean the pre-commit uh, hook actually, but the pre-commit um, uh, py Python package, and uh, yeah, the, the, and what you won't have much discussion about is imports. I thought uh, 
will sort your import just fine. And if you have legacy uh, code that still from dot dot import star, then with absolute, absolute defy imports and remove star, you get all your code into a consistent format. Speaking of consistent format, the next step is then black, black, well-known uncompromising code from uh, code formatter. And yeah, it's a bit more intrusive than I, I, I thought, uh, but yeah, you, you, you will uh, f find this uh, really helpful. Pi upgrade and Flint are uh, examples of tools that uh, bring your code base from earlier Python versions into yeah, the newest Python style, uh, doing reformat uh, uh, old string formats into F strings and uh, similar uh, things. And we want, ultimately, we want to test our code with Flake 8 and plugins. Uh, so we have a more, even more control about how we want to format our code. Yes, QA, uh, yeah, in, yeah, if you per first introduce a new plugin for, for Flake 8, mostly you have a lot of violations that you then comment out with no QA uh, XY001. And yeah, yes, QA is a little tool, you run over it, and if it finds a line with a no QA, some error code, and that, that error code is actually not raised in that line. It's just, that's just okay, this comment can go. Also keeps your code tidy up, less cluttered. Security. There are quite, uh, automated security uh, scanning tools out, uh, out there as well. First of all, uh, a bugbear. Bugbear, well, it's not so much a security tool, but it uh, alerts you to really common um, mis mis mistakes and, and, and ca caveats, like um, <coughs> passing a, a list as the, the def default value for a parameter and alerts you. You should better not, not do that and why. Bandit is a security scanner, and it's really um, focused at, at security, SQL injection, uh, injection cross-site encryption, uh, <coughs> cross-site um, uh, script exploits, and uh, su such things. And uh, safety and dependent bots actually uh, will scan uh, your dependencies, say, uh, see if they are uh, still up to still up to date, or if there are even uh, security issues for your dependencies. Um, you improve for, uh, you improve what you measure, and the easiest thing to, to, to measure is your test coverage. So there's, there's a good old coverage, of course, and uh, yeah, tool building on top of it is called diff cover, so which uh, measures. Uh, yeah, the, the coverage of your current pull request is uh, the next thing. You, is, what, what is easy to, to measure is the complexity of your code. Macape, Radon, and Xenon are yeah the better known tools, uh, and they, they, they do a pretty good job. And uh, the, the uh, a newer tool is Lizard. Uh, which, yeah, I, I, I tend to go uh, with Lizard because it's, uh, yeah, if, if Lizard thinks the code is too complex, it is most likely too complex. McCabe right, right, and Radon can be uh, harder to in interpret. And then only two years old, I think, is the cognitive complexity, also available as a Flake 8 plugin which takes more into account how a human actually processes the code. So not only decision points, but also recursions, for, for instance, to go into the future. 
Okay, ty typing. Okay, we want our, our code hypermodern, should be typed. And um, yeah, MyPy is yeah, the go-to tool, how to ensure that my types are, are good. But it's a real, yeah, big task to uh, type annotate a legacy code base. Luckily, there's a uh, monkey type, I think from Instagram, uh, um, which actually observes your code while you execute it and observes the types that are flowing into your functions and are uh, returned from your functions. And then with that information, it yeah, gives you a rough draft of type annotation. So you don't have to do it all by hand, but you get an educated guess uh, by, by the usage of your code. And uh, Pyre, the uh, <clears throat> the uh, type uh, Facebook's uh, answer answer to to to, to my my, my pie, uh, has. Uh, a, a command pyre infer, which yeah, infers from the, uh, the code flow it observes statically and the types you already have in your code, infers the types that probably are used in the code that builds upon it. PyType uh, from Google, pretty much just the same, has a uh, slight, slightly different command line interface. So that's where we are with type checking, uh, with, with static type checking. We also can, of course, uh, type check at runtime. Type guard is, some, uh, is, is an example. It comes with an overhead, so uh, you probably don't want to, at least not immediately, put that into production. But you can use type guard for your tests meaning that you, that you observe your tests and that you are really passing the right types around when you're te testing. Talking of tests, tests need, need a little love too when we are yeah, hyper-modernizing our code. Uh, TIG it, uh, if you still use unit tests, try TIG it, it makes it so much more, pre it makes, it refactors your, your code to have much more precise uh, assertions. And yeah, it's really great for, for legibility. PyTestify and unit test to PyTest are both tools to convert your old unit tests into, uh, into, into PyTest. Py so hypermodern te testing. Uh, yeah, hypermodern Python actually, the article series does not have big opinions uh, um, about testing apart from PyTest. And I yeah, just want to throw something in, into the ring here, and that is hypothesis. Hypothesis is a <coughs> proper be, uh, uh, enables you, you to do property based testing, which really means that hypothesis generates lots of test data for you, throws it at your functions, and then see, uh, see, see what, what comes out. There's even a little tool, Ghostwriter, in Hypothesis, I haven't tried it, that's why it's right, um, that tries to write Hypothesis uh, tests for you based on your function signatures. And <clears throat> if you are, uh, yeah, working with web, web APIs, try schema thesis. Schema thesis is built on top of our hypothesis, and it um, you point it at, uh, <coughs> uh, at an um, open a API specification or it's a GraphQL specification, and it generates tests for you. It generates test data that is valid according to your specifications. You'll be amazed. Uh, yeah, are there any QA persons 
in here? No? Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, and schema CSS is also available as a service. So you don't need any, yeah, uh, re uh, you don't need to be a developer. It's uh, uh, available as software as a service. You just point it at an open API endpoint and it generates the tests it's, and it really uh, torments your code. <laughs> okay. Kish Custodiet Ipsi Custodes, who is watching that watchman? How do you know that your tests are actually testing what you, what you think they are testing? And 100% test, test coverage. Are you really sure if you change something in your code that your tests will catch that? Um, probably not. I, 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 I'm pretty sure about, about, about that. I tried MUT MUT, uh, I, a mutation testing tool, which pretty much uh, runs all your tests and then changes just a little bit in your code instead of x, equal, uh, uh, x equals y. It says, okay, if I change this line to x, if x less th th than y, or x greater than y, will the test break? If the tests break, that is a bad thing. If the tests break, that's a good thing. The te tests are testing the right thing. If your tests pass, that is a surviving mutant. That is a very bad thing. You didn't test for that. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, when I said monkey type takes uh, more time, uh, tests take more, more time to, uh, to run with monkey type. With mutmut, -mut, this explodes exponentially. So, <clears throat> yeah, you have to be very specific. Your core business logic, actually, is what you want to test. Um, with, with the, the, uh, this, this, this kind of tool. <clears throat> so we um, ha have uh, upgrades uh, on, on, a, on a regular ba basis. Pi upgrade uh, assists you with yeah, uh, getting your Syntax for the new Python uh, up, to, up to date with the new Python versions, <coughs> and then also uh, tools for specific frameworks. Py upgrade and Django code mod, for instance, uh, will convert, I think, Django from version 1.11 up to 4.0. And if you're working with Django, that has changed quite a lot, and it does a pretty decent job at it. You can also roll your own code mod modifications tool with yeah, uh, libcst, CST for contract, uh, <coughs> concrete syntax tree that does all that. There, there was a talk on Monday I wanted to attend to tell you a bit more about it that was unluckily canceled. So, <laughs> sorry, this slide is very short. <laughs> okay, um, refactoring as a service. Uh, yeah, our sponsors here, uh, you can just look, look them up down there. Sorcery, um, that, that does a re uh, I've, I've used Sorcery for years. It does a really, really good jo jo uh, job um, for, yeah, for small re re uh, refactorings. Sonar Cloud is kind of in the, sa in the same sp problem sp uh, space. They are downstairs too. Have a look at them. Talk to them. And Metabob is a kind of new, uh, new kit on, on the block. And yeah, when we are thinking back our, our te test coverage, uh, coverage IO is a test coverage as a service um, um, uh, so software, uh, which uh, d does a really good job at highlighting your pull requests what is covered, what is not covered, and so on. So, <clears throat> where do you want to go from here? 
right now, we pretty much uh, we factored our code line by line. That is not what real refactoring is about. It's more about don't repeat yourself, or if you or write everything twice to see uh, patterns uh, emerging. And there's also the solid principle. Single res uh, responsibility, open closed, risk of interface, segregation, dependency and in inversion. You should know them. And uh, the more modern Cupid principles, which originated in a talk why every single solid principle is wrong. <laughs> and, uh, but at the, at the end of the day, Cupid and Solid are not so different. You should read up about both of them, and then, yeah, get your car, uh, uh, yeah, get, get, get your own philosophy out of that. And <clears throat> when I say here principles, it's not like Isaac Newton's Principia. These are opinions. You can. Uh, you, uh, uh, these are, these are op op opinions. This is not like uh, the law of gravity. You can't argue, argue with gravity. You can argue with all of this. <coughs> Those are, yeah, means to achieve an end. What, we, what do we want? We want maintainability, extensibility, modularity in, in our code. And always remember, perfect is the opposite of done. Do you have still the picture in mind how we thought our kitchen would, would look like? Well, we are not quite there. But this kitchen is so much better than what we started with. And it's much more joy to, uh, to work in a kitchen like that. OK, in summary, we talked a little about what hypermodern Python is, why we would like our code to be hypermodern, and some tips and tricks how to hi hypermodernize your legacy code. And yeah, a bit about refactoring in general. OK, done is better than perfect. Goes for talks too. Thanks a lot. If anybody has questions. Uh, do, we have any, do we have any remote questions? No? So if there are any questions in the room, please use the mic. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed that. Very much. Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, if I have the worst legacy code base you've ever seen, what's one first step I can sell? Yeah, I, I thought, I thought uh, import order, nobody argues about that. Just do it. That, that's, the, that's the easiest step to get started. And, uh, yeah, pre and, pre and, and at the same time, introduce pre-commit, so every, every time it, it's executed. Then, and then, yeah, or, uh, black and further and further, yeah. Any other questions? If not, then, Christian, thank you very much, and just another round. Yeah. <laughs>